Good morning, folks. We've got the space weather impact we've been expecting, some weather stories, news on Ceres, Enceladus, and climate change. But let's get right to it over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're looking at the last 24 hours on our star. SDO eclipse season continues twice every year, same time every year. We don't notice much activity, but for a bit of popping at the only sunspot group on the disk. It wasn't really even able to take the X-ray flux much up off the floor. Not very impressive to look at either, but does have beta class magnetism, so watching how it develops today will be paramount. Solar wind, you see the first impact we showed yesterday, but another perfect coronal hole signature appeared. Another bump in orange, the density, and when it dropped out, the particle speed in purple rose once more. Earth's magnetic field is characterized as unstable this morning, and this could continue throughout the following hours with geomagnetic storms possible if more streams arrive, which is possible because the coronal hole spewing that solar wind faces Earth now, yesterday, tomorrow, and there's finally the trailing end of the opening, much more impressive than I'd have guessed. We'll be watching, but right now we're moving on. Dawn has detected organic compounds on Ceres and did so in two different craters, with a coverage area of hundreds of square miles just littered with life's building blocks. Up next, NASA put out a video showing all their flybys of Enceladus, the water world narrated by two scientists describing the passes and discoveries related to the water volcano jets on the South Pole, and also how there's probably liquid ocean beneath the icy surface. Back to Earth for the January global climate update from the U.S. government looks a bit more accurate than previous releases compared to the raw data, but we've still got problems. Same thing Tony Heller, a.k.a. Stephen Goddard, and others have been showing for a while. Land station data is magic. It didn't want to show itself for most of Africa, but somehow it ends up mostly red on the chart that will get passed around the internet. Gray missing data in the northern parts of South America with blue cold readings around the periphery. Those disappear and bleed red on the chart used to fool the public. Even close to home, look at the gray in northern Canada and to the right in Greenland. Any guesses what's coming? Yeah, that's how it looks on the propaganda machine. Quick peek in on the sun's anvil, locals named for the worst, hottest, driest part of the desert in the Middle East, except for the last few days. Not so dry, not so scorching hot, shouldn't rain like that in this desert. Of course, the top story weather-wise remains at the U.S. West Coast. Water levels continue to rise in Northern California, and they are about to do so in the South. This storm will break records, SoCal. Do not get caught in a flash flood zone, or you may be done making mistakes on this planet. Folks, we've got pressure and radar forecast, followed by a null school global run-up through the atmosphere and shots of our star to close. There are 50 days until observing the frontier. Hundreds are already registered from all around the world and every relevant alphabet agency I know of. Not sure if any of you are capable of making plans on such short notice, but it's the observer's event of the year. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.